Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome each of you in attendance, as well as those of you who are watching this meeting on City 7 to the February 12th meeting of the Independence Planning Commission. Before we begin our meeting, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our meetings, it is responsibility of this commission to hold public hearings and make recommendations to the Independent City Council on matters related to zoning and land use changes within our city. We also consider and make decisions on plats, special use permits, and other issues as well as changes in codes and policies that relate to city planning. Our procedure for each case tonight is as follows. First, the applicant, first after the city gives its report, then the applicant will be recognized to speak on behalf of their case, followed by anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak in favor of that matter. Then, those who are in opposition or who have questions regarding the case will then be recognized to speak. And if there was no opposition or questions from the public, the applicant will be allowed uh, if there was questions, the applicant will be allowed a rebuttal period to address those concerns or questions. Once the applicant is finished, the chair will declare the public hearing portion of the case closed and further comment from the public will not be recognized. Then at that point, the commissioners will have the opportunity to discuss the merits of the case with one another. And during this discussion, the commission reserves the right to ask questions of all parties concerned. And then finally, the commission will render a decision in the case. Because this is the only public hearing of the case is on the agenda tonight, all those who wish to speak will be heard. All comments and questions should be addressed to me, the chair, and not directly to the applicant or its city staff. The chair also requests that statements be kept brief and on point, and that if a statement has already been made by a previous speaker, please do not repeat it but simply indicate your agreement on the matter. Now, to expedite tonight's meeting, the chair asks that everyone who wishes to testify or believes that they might testify, please stand now and be sworn in. And those standing, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Thank you, you may be seated. First item on our agenda tonight is case number 19-100-02, rezoning of 2116 South Sterling Avenue. Stuart, would you get the report, please? At Chow Bang request to rezone this property at 1226 South Sterling Avenue from 01 Office Residential to R6 Single Family Residential. The vicinity map shows the general location of the site on the east side of Sterling across from East 21st Street north of East 23rd Street. As you can see in the, in the, uh, in the uh, plan there, you can, the property is in the little red circle. This is the zoning for the area. As you can see, the 01 pretty well stands out against the uh, rest of the property, which is zoned R12 around there. Um, it has been zoned uh, 01 or the equivalent for many years. The surrounding property are, is zoned R12, which, is, uh, which has also been zoned R12 for many years. And most of the homes, most of the lots around here contain single family homes. This is the aerial photo of the site. As you can see from the photo, the building is on the south side of the lot with the parking uh, area on the north side of the lot. Most of the surrounding lots contain single family homes with some duplexes. A former banquet hall is across Sterling to the southeast. This is the front of the building. It was taken yesterday or Friday, I don't remember which exactly. Uh, as seen from the east side of South Sterling, it was previously used for and built as a single story brick office building. The driveway entrance onto Sterling is on the right. 
Um, and this is another closer photo of the building front along with a covered entrance onto the, on the right side of the photograph. This is another, well, this is a picture of the north elevation showing the covered walkway into the building and then the rest of the side of the building. Okay, this is the, uh, here we're standing in the back of the parking lot looking east at the rear of the building with a small porch on the right side. And uh, this is a house that's immediately to the south of the uh, site. You can see it's a single family home. And this is uh, two houses that are north of the site, also single family homes. Okay, here we're sitting in the parking lot of the uh, property looking to the west at uh, some single family homes that back up to this property. And again, you can see the parking lot there in the foreground and more single family homes behind. This is on the east side of uh, Sterling, uh, more or less uh, directly across from the site. Uh, that's 21st Street that comes out and tees into uh, Sterling there on the right. That's a, actually a duplex in that building there. Uh, to the uh, southeast, on the southeast corner of that intersection, there's the former uh, banquet hall. That's been closed for a few years from my understanding. And staff does recommend approval of this application. Thank you, Stuart. Does anyone have questions for Stuart? Okay, would the applicant please come forward? Uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Chao Wang, 15220 Kelly Road, Grandview, Missouri, 64030. Okay, do you have anything to add to what Stuart said, or do you want to tell us anything? Not really. Uh, actually, when I bought it, I have no plan. I thought it was a good building. And I never thought that the city might require this fire sprinkler system until I put the signs on it for rent. And I have a lot of people look at it. They want to put uh, home hair care or child care centers in there. But we always, they always run into problems that the city require fire sprinkler system. So it's been four or five years now that I could not get anyone rented. So I thought that's easier to convert to a single family home. If you look at the building, I think it's, it, it will look nice if we convert into a single family home. Okay. Anyone have questions of Mr. Vong? All right. Given Thank you. The, oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Given the large amount of concrete uh, asphalt parking and transitioning it to residential as opposed to commercial use, how do you plan to do that? What do you I do have uh, several people look at it. They they like it. I think that is a plus for for them. That people think that if they buy it or rent it, it's good to put a basketball court or for the kids to play around, like a, that kind of thing. So I think that that may be benefit the kids too. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who'd like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone here who is opposed or who has questions? Okay, seeing no one trying to gain access to the podium, we'll declare the public hearing portion of this case is closed and open up uh, any discussion or comments or motions from the uh, commissioners. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. In the matter of case number 19-100-02, rezoning at 2116 South Sterling Avenue, the request to zone the property from 2116 to Office 01, Office Residential, to R6, Single Family Residential, I move that that be adopted. I second. Okay. Mr. Preston moves and Virginia seconds. If there's no further discussion or comments, then I believe we're ready for the vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number, sorry, lost my place. Case number 19. 100-02 rezoning of 2116 South Sterling Avenue has been approved. Good luck to you, sir. You're welcome. 
Our next case is case number 19-100-03, rezoning of 1917 and 1919 South Scott Avenue. Stuart, do you have the report for us? Yes, Lynette Woods, a request to rezone the property at 1917-1919 South Scott Avenue from R12. Two-family dwelling to R18 PUD, moderate density residential planned unit development, and approve a preliminary development plan. The vicinity map shows the general location of the site, which is on the east side of Scott Avenue, south of Winter Road and north of East 23rd Street. It's in the little red circle there. This is the zoning from the area. The subject tract has been zoned R12 for many years. The properties a few blocks to the east are zoned R6, which is that lighter yellow on the right side of the screen. The neighborhood generally contains a mixture of single and two-family dwellings. This is the aerial of the photograph of the site. As you can see, the duplex is on the front part of the lot with the freestanding garage in the rear. Most of the lots, again, in the immediate area are single-family homes. Uh, this is the front of the building as seen from the west side of South Scott. It was constructed as two-family dwelling with matching halves of the building, as you can see, it's kind of a, a mere reflection of itself there. The driveway into the property is on the left. Um, this is another photo of the building show, showing the north side of the house, the driveway, and then the garage you can see in the rear. This is the uh, house immediately to the south, a single family home. This is a house, one of the two houses that are directly across from the site. Again, it appears as a single family home and another one north of that. And then this is the house that's uh, immediately uh, north of the applicant's property. And um, this does have a, well, this is yet, yeah, to north, actually, of the, of the site. And then this is the one that's actually directly north, this uh, property. And this could be a two-family dwelling. I'm not really sure. The driveway goes back to the back, and it looks like the back part of this building may be another dwelling unit. I'm not sure. Uh, staff uh, recommends denial of this application. However, if it is decided the application warranted rezoning and preliminary development plan approval, staff recommends the following items be conditions of approval. One, that the property, the use of the property is limited to only three dwelling units, two units on the main floor of the building and one dwelling unit above the main floor. The water surface curb box needs to be raised to ground level and the top section replaced. The city water department can provide further details. And then in the future, all proper permits must be taken out to allow for any future construction on the site as required by the building codes. And uh, be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the subtleties of this, maybe, of this case. <laughs> um, it seems like there was some fault of the water department or something for not catching something originally correct well from what i understand the uh the, the upstairs was converted <clears throat> to a unit a dwelling unit and then later they obtained a permit through a community development to either change it to the upstairs could have its own meter or just to provide electrical service up there However, there was no permit issued for any plumbing or mechanical work in that unit. So we were not aware of that until uh, it came up to where there was a turn on the power situation for that unit. And then it was, we realized that there was a unit up there and uh, it, there shouldn't have been, basically. Um, and because you found out, they can't continue. Well, yeah, it's been, it's the upstairs unit has been vacant for, uh, I don't know, several months. So they have to now 
a recent city policy is they have to get an energized permit once the power has been turned off for a certain time period. And I think that's how we discovered there was a upstairs unit. Now we have issued meters for duplexes and various things like this for an, an additional meter that, that extends beyond there if, if there's outside lighting or lighting in a hallway or a sump pump in the basement that requires uh, a third meter for a duplex, let's say, and that the owner would pick up. So it's not necessarily, it's, I say we don't do it very often, but there is, are times when we do issue another meter for like a building like this when the uh, property owner who may live in Overland Park is paying for a service that's outside the uh, services provided by each unit. Like I said, for a, a, a light in a hallway or a sump pump in the basement or something like that, that, that they are responsible for. And we've issued meters for those before. But that doesn't mean that it's a meter for a dwelling unit, which is what this is. Okay. Anything else? Doing the zones begins the process of changing the character of the neighborhood. Is it possible that rather than changing the zoning, is it possible to authorize some special use permit of that upstairs since it was represented as such by this new owner to this new owner and leave the character of the neighborhood intact without a change in zoning, can we do that? No, the, uh, the special use permits, and in independent anyway, special use permits are issued for specific items in a particular zone. Some cities have the, with a special use permit, you can put anything anywhere, but our city does not have that. So that compromise is not available. No, it's not there. The only thing that uh, we could do is, is go, uh, go go up from an R12 to an R18, which is the next highest level, which does allow multiple units, more than two units, in a single building. Okay. Uh, why, don't, uh, why don't we have the applicant come forward and, and tell us what the situation is here. And please say your name and address for the record, okay? Good evening, my name is Lynette Woods. My address is 8309 East 104th Street in Kansas City, Missouri, 64134. Thank you. Just I'm a real estate broker. Um, I represent Sergio Saves, who was my client in California. Um, I found this property for him. It was advertised as a triplex in the MLS. Um, and so we purchased the property. Yes. You might have to speak a little more directly into there. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, is that better? That's better, thank okay. you. Okay, so um, we purchased the property. Um, there was a tenant in the upstairs unit. They didn't show it on the camera, but the upstairs unit is actually in the back and it has its own porch. Um, so there was a tenant living there at the time when I went to view the property for my uh, client. Um, she moved out of that top unit and moved into 1919 over here on the right side and there's always been a tenant in 1917 since we purchased the property. So we didn't have a tenant in the beginning. When I did go and get a tenant, it had been 90 days, literally 94 days. If I had a gone before that 90 day mark, they would have given me lights and we would still have a tenant there. The only way we found out that this was an illegal unit was because I went past the 90 days and I had to get this energizer permit. After I went and applied for the energizer permit, then they tell me that this was an illegal unit and I had no way of knowing that. So I had to report back to my owner in California that this is an illegal unit and now we have to go through a process to try and figure out if we're gonna even be able to rent the unit. After I did my research, I found out that the previous owners bought the unit just like this. However, what they did was they went and they got a, um, a permit to get the meters separated so that the tenants can pay all pay their own light bills. So the tenants are responsible for lights, gas, but there's one water meter where the owner pays the water and we split the water between the tenants. And that's how the previous management company had done it. That's how they sold it to me. That's the paperwork that I have. That's how I sold it to him. 
Okay, so then when they said that we couldn't get it, that the that the unit was illegal, I was totally baffled, confused, did not understand at all. So now we're here. So what I found out is that they did issue a permit to separate the meter. They also so issued a permit, a rental permit to rent the upstairs unit. So they gave them a permit to rent, they gave them a permit to separate the meter, but now when I come, I can't get it because it's an illegal unit. So my question was, why wasn't this caught before? And what can we put in place to prevent this from happening to someone else in the future? As a real estate broker, I know to do my homework now and to check if I'm gonna sell a duplex or any type of multi-unit, especially in independence, I need to verify if it's legal because I had never run into anything like this before and I've been doing real estate since 2005. So the unit is constructed, it's very nicely constructed actually. It's a um, one bedroom unit. It has, um, I wish you guys could really see it. I don't understand how this could have gotten past because it's constructed so nicely actually. So I'm not real sure. Hopefully I know that they're um, saying that they don't recommend it, but it's already there. It's something that we ran into. I didn't know that this was even an issue in independence. Um, and that's all I really have. <laughs> okay. Anybody have questions of Miss Lynette? Okay. Well, th thanks for thanks for that explanation. We're going to probably talk about it. We may ask you to come up and answer questions unless you've okay. got anything else to add. Not right now. I may have once you guys start talking. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here who would like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone who is opposed or has questions? Okay, I'm just going to close the public hearing portion, but uh, that doesn't mean that we still can't talk. Okay. So, cows out the barn. Yeah. I just want to make sure I understand. So she can't use it the way she, the owner can't use it the way he wants to use it because of this discovery. Is that what you're saying? Um, I don't know how long the unit's been up there, but uh, I went back through the, all the permitting that we had in electronic system from mid 1997 to now. And the only thing I could find on that, other than that electrical permit is they had part of the roof roof replaced or maybe all the roof there was no permit issued in what is that 20 years 22 years and I don't know how long that unit's been up there but it is that's something that we deal with weekly in the center monthly is that uh, the conversion the illegal conversion of part of a house into another dwelling unit we get calls from appraisers that say well we have information we've been to this property and they've got a unit in the basement or something and it, well we don't know anything about that it was converted illegally most of the time in order to not show that they don't they extend electrical into that part of it, but don't get a second meter or a meter to serve just that unit and so we don't really have any way to know that but in this case they for whatever reason there was a permit issued for the to split the meter off and create a second unit into there and as far as the other inspection that she mentioned, it's part of the rental ready program and they do inspections, but uh, this program's just starting and we're gearing up into this. And so we have, I've talked to the, uh, the official that works with this program and advised him that if, if his inspector sees anything that looks unusual, that looks new in a, in a building they go through and inspect, they should contact us and let us know so we can maybe put a, a lid on some of these illegal units. And I, like I said, I don't know how old in the, this is, but my guess is it would probably not, did not receive a permit when it was created. If you go back 22 years. Well, yeah, but that house has been there for what, 60, 70 years maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay. How would they, how would this investor have known that this was an illegal unit? 
I know that's what the the appraisers and the uh, real estate people uh, one of the things they're supposed to do is you know check into that sometimes they just believe that it is but that's sometimes why we get calls from these appraisers that says well there's three units in this building and it's only zoned for two what do you know about it and we say well we don't really know anything about it you said they say is it legal and I said well I don't know what's the history of it and sometimes they know the history and sometimes most of the times they don't yeah this almost sounds like it was not disclosed correctly and so so and and what's, I can't believe what's the, it. what's the main issue? What what's the main issue with it? Well, how bet, how is it? I mean, it's just it's illegal just because there's more people. They've got three units in a building that only allows for two units. It's only zoned for it's two. It's only zoned. That is correct. And see, this property's been zoned R12, two family dwelling for probably since the city adopted zoning. So it's not it's not like the zoning changed in the neighborhood. It hasn't changed. This part of town, like I said, has been this way for a really long time. Okay. Ms. Woods, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Uh, when you do, you need to talk to the microphone. So. There were two appraisals done on this property. And so I would like to know how, how the real estate community could have known. If we're not familiar with independence, if we're just now bringing our business to independence, how do we know to check for illegal units? How do we know to even ask the question? Why would that even be a question? How would we know that that was an issue in independence? And once we found out it's an issue, and I'm saying I'm on board, come on, let's work together. Let's let this not happen to any other investors or any other real estate individuals. How do we stop the problem? Or how do we solve the problem? I don't know. At any point, did you check the zoning? At, no, I did not. No, I did not. It was advertising the MLS as a triplex. I took the MLS word for it. I took the listing agent's word for it. Maybe as a listing agent, if I were the listing agent, maybe I would think, hmm, let me check this zoning. However, I just went by the MLS because, again, in my 13 years, how, how many years, 2005, in all those years, I've not run into an issue like this and even if i'm denied here i have to go further because now we need to i mean he's i sold him a bad product i sold him a product that cannot perform the way i told him it will perform the way i was told it will perform so he's counting on having three units in there absolutely well you maybe have a case the way it was represented to you but i mean i think that partly some of this would be solved with our new rental ready program. Did I say it right? But I didn't I, say it wrong. I, I, but hopefully that's the case. Yes. This will hopefully catch with, catches all the the issues we've been having through the years. So that's good news. Um, that is good news. But when they issued the rental permits, they issued it for 1917A, 1917B, and 1919. So how would they know? They issued the permit for all three units. So he's saying, tell me if you see something funny, but how would he know it's something funny? How would he know it doesn't belong there? There will have to be some type of catch right there when we're calling, asking for the permit, just like they caught me. They should have caught the other people. Just like they stopped me and said, hey, you can't do this. You need an energizer permit. Well, that should have been in place for the previous owners so that the previous owners then could have represented it How did properly. the uh, Energizer permit cross-reference with the zoning to realize that well, I think one of the permit decks I saw that uh, That there was a, a, a third meter for this location and asked us to, if what we knew about it and that's when we started the investigation. As far as uh, these uh, energizing permits have not been in place that long, less than a year, I think. And then the uh, a rental ready program has not been in, in place that long either. I'm sure there's gonna be more hiccups as we go along <clears throat> as they find things out. Does this commission have the final decision on this or does it go no, to- No, it goes to city council. It, it appears here that the City Planning Commission and the City Council 
is being asked to remedy a fraudulent sale, a misrepresentation of sale. Because this is a two unit advertised as a triplex. Therefore, uh, I, I'm troubled that this commission or even the city council is put in the position of remedying a fraudulent sale. I certainly understand where you're coming from on that. Uh, and not this board, but another board involved with the city board of adjustment. We get cases where they'll build a a garage on the back of their property and then get caught and come to the board and and seek a um, well they'll seek a variance to put it there and uh, but it's already in place and it puts the board in a bad position and I don't know of any way to any other way to resolve this and obviously they could uh, take all the the kitchen and the living quarters make the upstairs no longer a living unit and that would resolve it because then you'd have only two dwelling units in the in the building. That would not resolve it for my, my buyer or for you. Sure. Right. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, well, I was just gonna say, I mean, my inclination is that to agree with the city, mainly because I feel like rezoning a situation that, that has been there so long as a double I just know when you go to three units and then we allow others to go to three units, it will change that neighborhood dynamic. And so I don't feel good about making that decision based on just a situation that where that was misrepresented. I mean, if it was a neighborhood change and we wanted to make a neighborhood change, a purpose, intentional thing, that would be a, a good discussion. But this one concerns me with something that's been this way a while. Okay. Ordinarily, I'm almost always in favor of whatever an applicant wants as long as there's no resistance by residents in the neighborhood. Residents apparently have been aware of this for however many years that it has existed and have never posed any opposition, nor when they were notified did they come forward to say, well, we know that that unit has been there, we opposed it, and no one listened to us. Um, I, I remain torn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we're not sure if they really knew or not. Well, but they know they now that well, yeah. because they were given notice that there's an application for a zoning change. Sure. And no one has presented themselves to be in opposition. Mm. So, with that thought in mind, it kind of overrides my tendency to think a fraudulent sale remedy, but it was advertised as a triplex, purchased as a triplex, existed for possibly 20 plus years as a triplex, mm -hmm. and now in this commission meeting, no one has come forward to oppose it. Is there resistance to a zoning change? Apparently not. Well, there usually isn't because it's probably been a probably been well-behaved people that live there. But if you get unwell-behaved people live <laughs> there, you know it's like opening a can of worms. You don't want to. You, you can't put it all back in there. In a garage, you know. Sure. We don't know. Well, we have other neighborhoods in Independence that have done that, and they are mixed with doubles and triples, and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the good, the best, or for the greater good, or for the future of Independence. It's just. Well, for 20 years, we haven't seemed to have any problems. Yeah. Yeah. But. But for how long was that up there? One of the original tenants has moved time. out. Okay. So there's going to be, what, three new tenants, perhaps? No, I still have two tenants. We just don't have one. And, and I was getting ready to rent it. That was the thing. We were getting ready to sign a lease. And she called to get a license and said, hey, you have to get an energizer permit because they said it's been vacant mm -hmm. 90 days. And I think I was at the 94th day. Literally, if I had a call the week before, we would be renting it right now and still not knowing that it's an illegal unit. Sure. I, I for one, am very sympathetic to your plight yeah. and your owner's plight. However, most, most uh, planning commission members across the, our great country 
uh, are loath to do spot zoning because um, it can start that little wedge in there that can start to you know do something to the character of the neighborhood and we try not to do that and I think that in one way this would be an easy way to remedy your problem however I don't agree with spot zoning so I think you might have to take the harder path if it's available to you by actually you know going back after the perpetrator of this problem the one who started it which is the whoever you know advertised it as being that way when it wasn't shouldn't have been so that's that's my opinion but uh, that doesn't mean we haven't voted yet so it doesn't mean it I might be in the minority. I don't know. Does anybody else have any comments? 21 residents, neighbors. Notified. None present to oppose. I posted a sign. We had to post a sign. We had to pay the, the fee. And we're willing to do whatever we need to do to get this rezone but I understand what you're saying well we are well. simply recommending to the City Council my experience is that they don't always take our recommendations they kind of do what they want to do which is their prerogative uh, therefore you may have to take your case up to your City Councilman and plead your case and see if he will do that but because we may turn it down or we may recommend it, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna do what we say. So there's, this, this isn't the last, this isn't the last, uh, you know, fight. Um, and I am, again, I'm sympathetic to your plight, but I don't, if we start doing that, it's like one of those things, if we start doing this, then it's where do we stop? If, um Illegal units are a problem in independence, and this is known. Then what is being done about it? Well, that's a good question, Stuart. What is being done about it? And what's it? going to be done about it in the future if someone else buys a unit, and it's an illegal unit, and they come before this council asking for the same thing I'm asking? Well, I wouldn't bring it up to your councilman, but I think that they're probably loath to go into people's homes to make sure that they're complying with everything because it sounds a little communistic. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know. But anyway, can you answer that, Stuart? Well, um, we don't have a, I don't know what you'd call it, a, a register of non-conforming structures or uses in the city. I've wa thought about starting one of those many times, but never start, uh, started one. And that would list property and then, you know, add an address and then it would have a duplex. Uh, even though it's a single family home, it... Uh, was converted onto a duplex, you know, whatever we knew about that particular address. Um, as far as the rental ready program, that could help also. But the, uh, uh, if we had a register of these places, a list it would be helpful in the future. Do you have a list of duplexes that are in the city of Independence? And do you have a list of what they're supposed to be zoned and what they really are? Do no, we don't. We do you have any extra units mm. to them? Like minded like the lady who was in giving me the energizer permit can she look at all the duplexes to see if there are any extra units attached to them to see if there are any outlaw units just to kind of try and that's try why we get calls from uh, appraisers like i said we frequently get calls and they'll say well um i did the zoning on the because they'll call and ask about the zoning and i'll say well it's a, in this case i'd say it's a r12 two-family dwelling and he'll say, well, there's a unit upstairs. Well, what do you know about that? And I said, well, I wouldn't know anything about it. I don't know if it's legal or not. I don't know how long it's been there. But um, at that point, we should probably do research because if you're telling him he doesn't, we, you don't know, and then he just goes and does his appraisal, then we could have caught it kind of right there if we would have just sat there and kind of investigated it to see. But now we've sold a unit to someone who thinks they're getting a, three, a triplex but it's really zoned as a duplex. You knew that, the appraiser didn't know that, we certainly didn't know. There are a couple of gaps the that we can fill in. The appraiser should have known that, I would think. 
Well, the appraisers are probably, appraisers. probably most, legally responsible for that. Most appraisers, they call about what the zoning is on a property. Yeah. yeah. And as far as how are we going to know that, that's, these things were converted illegally, most of them. Sure. That's how we don't know about them. There's no permits for water, mechanical, or electrical. I mean, it's not unusual. Well, I know in some of these older neighborhoods that was done quite often and, uh, you know, done back when there was a wink, wink, nod, nod, and people did what they wanted. So, mm -hmm. any, you got something to say? I have a motion. Okay, please make a motion. Mr. Chair? Yes. In the matter of case number 19-100-03, rezoning at 1917 and 1919 South Scott Avenue from R12 to family dwelling to R18 PUD modestly den density residential plan unit development and approve a preliminary development plan. I move that that be adopted with the stipulations as outlined by staff. One, the use of the property is limited to only three dwelling units, two units on the main floor of the building and one unit above the main floor. Two, the water service curb box needs to be raised to ground level and the top section replaced. And three, all proper permits must be taken out to allow for future construction work on the property as required by the city building code. Thank you. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? If not, we'll be ready for the vote. Commissioner F Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Goldsberry? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? No. Chairman Ashbaugh? No. Case number 19-100-03, rezoning of 1917 and 1919 South Scott Avenue has been recommended and will go to City Council. So good luck to you, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay, I think that's the last thing except for reading of the uh, for the the minutes approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any additions, corrections? Okay, hearing none, the minutes will be approved as written. Does the city have anything to communicate to us? Not at this time. All right. Then we stand adjourned at 6.43 p.m.